So springtime is a time of renewal, it's a time of rebirth, it's a time of being a new version of yourself, a better, more improved version of yourself, and what better way to do so than wearing some fragrances that make you feel like the best version of yourself and really put you in the mindset of nice, warm weather. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my top 10 favorite spring designer recommendations for 2019, so stay tuned. Before I begin the video, I do want to mention that this is a personal list. These are fragrances from my collection. I have acquired all of these fragrances at some point throughout my entire fragrance career, if you want to call it that, from the time that I started collecting fragrances up until now. And these are tried and true. These are fragrances that have withstood the test of time, for me at least. And there's actually a couple that I'm not going to feature in this list, and I'll tell you why. So the two that I will not be featuring in this list are two of my favorites of all time. One of them is called Prada's Infusion. Fusion Dom, and the other one is called Un Jardin Sur Le Nil by Hermes. And the reason for that is because both of those are fragrances that have been peppered in my list throughout the years. I think they both at one point have made it to be number one in my spring recommendations. And so I wanted to do something a little bit different. I didn't want to give you the same mold, same mold. I wanted to try to spice it up a little bit. And so for that reason, I will not be featuring those two fragrances, but I will be linking them down below in case you're curious in exploring them or wanting to get to know a little bit more about them. Ultimately, they are two of my favorite fragrances for this time of the year. They always put me in the mindset of spring. So let's go ahead and start it off with my number 10. Just keep in mind these are personal fragrances. They are ones that I have in my collection. That's not to say that you're going to love them. That's not to say that you will feel the same way about them that I do. But if anything that I say about them, if any of my descriptions of these fragrances tickle your fancy, definitely go out there, read up a little bit more about them. Go on. There's plenty of online forums where you can educate yourself and learn more about these fragrances. So coming in at number 10 is Dior Um. Now this is an Olivier Polish composition. This is before Francois de Machy became the in-house perfumer for Dior. This is the first mainstream iris men's fragrance in the designer market and this is a phenomenal fragrance at that. I know that there are a lot of flankers, Dior Homme Intense, Dior Homme Parfum, Dior Homme O. Mm -hmm. O is probably the only other one that I would recommend for the springtime and then Dior Homme Cologne is really really good for the summer but this is probably my favorite for the springtime because it has the cleanest iris, the purest iris iris. That's not to say that it's natural, which I'm highly doubting it is. Really, it's not natural. It's such an expensive ingredient. The iris used in here is of uh, synthetic nature, um, but it's still a fragrance that I would highly recommend coming in at my number 10 spot. Definitely Dior um, from the house of Christian Dior. Definitely check it out if you haven't. And also the perfumer for this one happens to be the perfumer behind Spice Bomb by Victor and Rolf. So if that happens to be one of your favorite scents and you want to explore more from the same person who brought you that release, definitely check this one out. Now coming in at number nine, I do have to be honest with you guys. I don't like this fragrance as much as I like the uh, number 10 fragrance, Dior Homme. I absolutely love that one. But this is a recent acquisition of mine, and yes, I've reviewed it. And this actually, truth be told, gotta keep it real with you guys, is my least favorite fragrance of the ones of the flankers for this fragrance. And without further ado, it is Mugler Cologne, Love You All. Now, I am a huge fan of the original Mugler Cologne, and one of the reasons why I wasn't particularly blown away by this release is because this just smells, to me at least, way too similar to Mugler Cologne. There is a tropical variant that I liked a lot. There's also one with the note of cannabis in it that I found to be very intriguing. I should have purchased one of those two, but I ended up getting this one. But if you are a fan of the original and you're looking for something slightly sweeter with an added note of licorice, I think this one might appeal to you guys. But putting it in at number nine, Mugler Cologne, love you all. By the way, all of their fragrances are named after the lyrics of popular songs. So that's number nine for you. Coming in at number eight is one that I included in here for the sake of having something that would fit towards professional scenarios. So whenever you're dressed up in a shirt and tie, a suit and tie, you want to leave a good impression on those that you're going to be around. You want to put your best foot forward. You want heads to turn. This is one that I can't recommend enough. I actually love this fragrance and I've been wearing it from time to time. And this is a Tom Ford fragrance and it's one of the more mainstream designer level uh, fragrances from Tom. Uh, probably a lot of you already know what it is. 
And this one is Tom Ford's Gray Vetiver. Now, I know there's an Eau de Toilette and an Eau de Parfum. I personally have the Eau de Toilette. And so this is one that I enjoy wearing. It's very light and ethereal, but it gives you that crisp vetiver note that just comes across so professional and so easy to pull off. Uh, definitely fits the bill for any sort of upper tier uh, scenarios, whether that be, you know, maybe you have like a conference that you need to attend at your job, or maybe you're giving a presentation, or maybe you just want to smell professional. This is the fragrance to do that with. Number seven on this list is not professional. Uh, this is one of the lighter, more carefree releases from this brand. And this one is by Jean-Paul Gaultier and it's called Le Mal Superman Eau Fraiche. Now the year before that they had Popeye Eau Fraiche and every year they release a new version of it. But this is Le Mal Eau Fraiche. So whatever limited edition they have for that year, I mean, I'm gonna be using this one because this is the one that I haven't really worn too much of. and. This is by Natalia Gracia Cetto. So this is not Francis Kirk John who did the original Le Mans. This is a lighter, mintier, fresher version of Le Mans. As a matter of fact, in terms of the scent DNA, I don't think they're that similar to be honest with you. The original Le Mans is a lot of mint, lavender, vanilla. This one retains the mint and the vanilla, but practically does away with the lavender. Uh, I would recommend you guys check this one out if you're a fan of the house, but mm -hmm. you're looking for something that would be a bit more accommodating for the hotter weather. Le Mans Superman Eau Fraiche is definitely the way to go. Coming in at number six is a fragrance that I love wearing just because I think it's probably the easiest fragrance to wear in this entire list. You're not going to offend anybody. And this is one that also lands me a ton of compliments every time that I wear it. I think of the fragrances in this list, there are three that get me a ton of compliments and this is one of them. So this one by Versace is called Versace Parom. So this is just Versace for men. So this is the original and this one is just very clean, very fresh. It has this oceanic aquatic vibe to it. This one was composed by Alberto Morias, who is an incredibly talented master perfumer. And uh, he's gotten his name out there in so many different releases. I really have a ton of respect for him. He's done Givenchy Pie. He's done Aqua Decima by Eau de Tali, which is one of my favorite scents of all time. And so this is one that I would definitely put in at number five. So easy to wear. Versace Porom. Definitely give it a shot if you haven't. Coming in at number five on this list is a fragrance that I like to wear in the springtime because of its inclusion of the note of mint. And this is one where this house has some hits, has some misses. Uh, there are people that really love a lot of what this house has put out. And I do think this is among the better releases that this house has put out. And this is Mr. Burberry Indigo. I actually purchased the, the huge bottle of this one. This one smells, to me at least, like a designer version of Amouage's Beach Hut Man, which is the bottle that I have right here. This one has that light, fresh, citrusy um, overtone to it, but it also has this added note of mint, and there is actual mint oil used in this fragrance, and it just gives this bright, fresh, sort of like a mojito vibe, but had there been more of an emphasis on the citrus nuances in here, I think it would have been more in the mojito family. Um, but this is just so well done for the hotter weather. If you haven't tried Mr. Burberry Indigo, this is one that I think, I think I would probably recommend this one over the original. It's a hard thing to say because I think the original is just more polished and more cleaned up. But if you're a fan of mint, check this one out instead. All right, so moving on to my top four. These are fragrances that, depending on how I feel in the morning or what side of the bed I get off of, I can easily make any of these number one or number two or number four. So these can all be sort of worn interchangeably and they do happen to be my four favorites for the season. Now, number four, I'm gonna be wearing it for a couple different reasons in addition to the fact that I just really enjoy the way that it smells. Um, one of the reasons why I'm gonna be wearing this one a lot more is because it is a recent acquisition of mine and so I do wanna spend more time with it. And one of the beauties of wearing a brand new fragrance, a fragrance that just came out, is that you get to commemorate a lot of really great moments and occasions with it. And this one by the company Dolce & Gabbana is called Light Blue 
Sun. I think this is one one of my favorite flankers uh, that this house has put out for light blue. I really also do enjoy the Owen Tons version. I've had the opportunity to review that one in the past as well. But what I like about this one is that it takes that award-winning original DNA and it also adds tropical notes of coconut and osmanthus. It kind of has like this um, sun-kissed skin vibe about it. So if you're not a fan of slightly salty fragrances, you might not be a fan of this one but I personally love this one. It's such a bright and cheerful fragrance and it always puts me in a positive state of mind. So Light Blue Sun by Dolce Gabbana. I absolutely love this one coming in at number four. Coming in at number three is a workhorse type of a fragrance. As a matter of fact, if there were a signature scent that I could ascribe that role in this collection, it would be this scent right here. Uh, this is one that I wear time and time again. One, for the reason that it is so easy to pull off, but two, because I'm getting kind of tired of wearing the original for obvious reasons. This one by Giorgio Armani is called Acqua di Gio Profumo. And this one does take the DNA of the original fragrance, but it, it has that added note of patchouli in here that makes it a little darker, a little deeper, and I think a little bit more versatile. This is one that you can wear all year round, as opposed to the original Aqua de Jo, which I would recommend for the hotter weather. Now, I do have the special blend version, which I think utilizes a patchouli note that is sustainably sourced by Givadon or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but it does smell the same as the original Profumo to my nose. So whichever version you end up picking up, I think you'll do equally well with either one. So Acqua di Gio Profumo, a great recommendation for this time of the year. Coming in at number two, uh, this fragrance will undoubtedly make a lot of sense to people that know what fragrance this fragrance is supposed to be a clone of. And the fragrance that this fragrance is a clone of is often dubbed the King of Spring for obvious reasons. So, all right, this fragrance is called Trenuit Pour Homme by Armagh. This is a clone of Green Irish Tweed by Creed. And for those of you who don't know, Creed's Green Irish Tweed is a fragrance that sells for 430 something dollars for a 3.4 ounce bottle. It's a very expensive niche fragrance. And this is a reverse engineered version of that. So this is going to set you back 30 bucks, something like that. Links are gonna be down below. But this is a really, really wearable, in, inexpensive, affordable option to Creed's Green Irish Tweed, and it gets it like 95% close. Now, it's never going to be 100%, but if you're in the market for a more affordable uh, rendition of Green Irish Tweed, which contains lemon verbena, uh, a lot of citrus, iris, violet, this is the way to go. And coming in at number one is a fragrance that I personally love and I've been wearing it year after year. When you look at the level of the juice in my bottle, you'll see that it's quite depleted. And so I will be needing to repurchase this one soon, except this second time around, I will not make the mistake of purchasing the small bottle. I will buy the biggest size that they have just because this is one that I wear so much of uh, this time of the year. And it always reminds me of being on vacation. And this is just an amazing scent. Not only does it happen to be one of my favorite scents for the spring, it's one of my favorite scents, period. This one from the house of Versace is called Man O Fresh. Now keep in mind, I said two fragrances I'm not going to include are Hermes Un Jardin Sur Lanil and Prada's Infusion Dumb for the sake that uh, I wear them every single year. And this is one that would be in the running basically. So it's an amazing citrus based scent. It also has a bit of like a juicy tart sweetness, a fruity sweetness on account of the use of star fruit, also known as Carambola. And so it has the fruity nuances, it has the citrusy nuances, but it's also very well polished, very well put together fragrance. I love wearing Versace Mano Fresh. It is one of my favorites of all time and it always puts me in the mindset of spring and summer. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in. These have been my top 10 favorite spring designer fragrances for 2019. If you own or have tried any of these fragrances, I would love to know what you think. Leave a comment mm -hmm. down below. Also, let me know what fragrances are you looking forward to wearing the most for the springtime this year? Let me know. Leave a comment down below. I really appreciate having that discussion with my subscribers. I really appreciate you guys and gals and everything that you've done for this channel. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel by clicking that red subscribe button in the corner. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it will get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads 
uploads, and that includes top 10 lists like this one, uh, giveaways, reviews, unboxings, interviews, special guests, and pretty much anything fragrance related. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. We'll see you in the next episode.